we love a refilm. We, we just really love wasting my time <laughs> because I had already recorded this whole video a few weeks ago because I knew I was going to be getting, come here. I knew I was gonna be getting kitties. Hi, everyone say hi to Aria. And Mr. Dorian's sleeping over there. So we're gonna let Dorian sleep, but I knew I was gonna be getting kittens. So I had pre-recorded a bunch of videos so that way I knew when I was gonna get them, like I was just gonna be busier and I wasn't gonna have time to like sit down and film between all the other things that I have going on, like work, the podcast, TikTok, everything. I just knew that things were not, we're gonna be a little hectic. So I had pre-recorded a bunch of videos. So I went to edit that video over the weekend and there was like a giant smudge over my camera. So all of the footage is like blurry. <sighs> So, were we filming today? So for this video this week, I know this isn't necessarily like a new idea. I know some other people have done it. I know a lot of people do like guides to certain authors, but I just wanted to do this purely for my own enjoyment. And also because I've been seeing a ton on TikTok of people discovering Penelope Douglas for the first time. And I saw one video where someone was like, who has been gatekeeping Penelope Douglas from me? Because I'm obsessed. And I'm like, thank you bring everyone over to the queen's side. Penelope Douglas is one of my all-time favorite writers. I own every single one of her books. I've read every single one of her books. So I want to do kind of like a breakdown on her two series, her standalones, kind of where to start, depending on what kind of tropes you're looking for, what I would recommend, reading order, that kind of jazz. I want to just kind of have like the end all be all guide to her. And also Tri-Six Venom is coming out next month. I am so excited. It is my most anticipated release of 2021. You already know I have that pre-ordered and I will be doing a reading vlog of that when that comes out. And also too, I just want to say, I know she's popular here on YouTube. I know a lot of the booktubers that I follow do talk about her books and recommend them. However, I know there are some people who, if you're new to reading romance, like a lot of the people that I've seen on TikTok or, or just genuinely if you're starting to get into reading romance, you don't really know where to start with an author. I don't want to like just bypass all of her work, just thinking that like everyone knows who she is. So here's a guide if you've never heard of Penelope Douglas, if you have, this is it. If you haven't read anything about Penelope Douglas, I just always recommend when you're going into any new author, checking out a standalone first. That's just kind of what I prefer to do because once I get into a series, I'm that person who I can't not finish it even if I'm not vibing with it so I have to finish even if I'm like oh, I don't really like this because I just don't like leaving the series incomplete so I would recommend starting with a standalone so that's what I'm going to cover first here she has four standalones so I'm going to start with her earliest release which is going to be Misconduct I do have the UK cover of this so this one is a bit of like an age gap forbidden single parent kind of aspect so this one follows Easton and Tyler Easton is a former retired tennis player player and she is now a teacher at the school and she meets one of her students dads Tyler who's like a really successful businessman in New Orleans so it's their romance so it's kind of like that forbidden aspect because there's that age gap there it's the fact that she's his son's teacher which I mean pretty much every single one of Penelope Douglas's books are like a little forbidden which is right up my alley I love that I think this is one of her least her, one of her less well-known standalones and while I do I would like put this towards the bottom of my list I still absolutely love this one and I think I still ended up giving this one like four and a half stars so check it out okay then the next standalone we're going to talk about is Punk 57 so this one is an enemies to lovers bully kind of high school secret pen pal hidden identity kind of vibe First of all, can I just say, I love this cover. This this and Credence are two of my favorite covers that she has. And also fun fact, Lil Flux here. This is a personalized copy. I won one of her giveaways a couple of months ago. And so I got to choose two books and I just thought that they would like come with her name signed in them, but she personalized both of them. I got this in Credence. This one's special to me. I don't wanna read it because I don't wanna ruin it. So this one follows Misha and Ryan who were paired up as pen pals when they were children. I believe they were like maybe fifth grade, you know, elementary school age. And they just kept that going after the project finished and they kept in touch and then one year just like all contact ceases to exist. And Ryan is kind of left wondering like what happened? And they both wanted to never meet or never reveal their true identities. They wanted to keep that kind of secret. So then Misha starts attending Ryan's school and Misha knows who Ryan is, but Ryan doesn't know who Misha is and they hate each other. 
and it goes from there. I think Ryan is a really great heroine, even though she's very flawed. I think that's something that Penelope Douglas does really well is creating flawed heroines that you can't help but root for and relate to. So I know this is like a call classic. I think this is like a fan favorite. It's not my personal favorite standalone, but I do still really love it. And it does take place in the same world as one of her series. So I'll talk about that when we get there. And there is a little cameo of three other characters in this one that I live for. Okay, so the next one here, this is my personal favorite. And this was the first ever Penelope Douglas book that I read. And that is Birthday Girl. This is a forbidden age gap boyfriend's dad's romance. Yeah? Yeah. Jordan is 19 and she's dating, I don't even know what his name is. I don't know, she's dating some guy. And they have to move in with his dad, Pike. And things kind of go from there. This is a slow burn, baby. So if slow burn is not your thing, I maybe wouldn't start with this one because it is slow burn. Now me personally, I love a slow burn and much more prefer that over something a little more insta-lovey. So I thought that the chemistry built up between these characters and that slowness just really added to the story and made it that much more of a page turner for me. And it just, it reigns supreme in my book for her standalones. This one is my favorite. It's my favorite book that she's ever written overall. I mean, again, this cover is just gorgeous. I've gotten so many of my friends to read this one, even though I'm like, I know it sounds weird. She falls in love with her boyfriend's dad, but I promise it's not weird. It's not amazing. And I think a really good starting point, if you're looking to like jump into Penelope Douglas, if you never had, I think Birthday Girl or Punk 57 are the two books to go to. Okay, and last standalone before we get into the series, the most what I just realized that ugly box is back there. Okay, I promise I'm just not leaving that box there. My cats have been playing in it. And I have a whole pile of cardboard back there that I'm just waiting to take down to my trash room. I know, guys. Let's not comment, please. <laughs> Last standalone is going to be Credence. First, my favorite cover. I mean, this is just stunning. Again, it's personalized. I love that. I don't want to read it because I just want to keep it in pristine condition. So this one is a wild one. There's an age gap. It's not reverse harem because she doesn't get with, or she doesn't choose all of them in the end, but you know what, let's just jump in. So this book follows Tiernan and both of her parents die at the start of the book. She's almost 18, so her step uncle, who she has never met, like doesn't have any relation to him whatsoever, calls and is like, hey, your parents left you to me. But like, if you don't want to come live out in the mountains with me and my two sons, like you're almost 18, you don't need to. And she's like, you know what? I've never really had a family. So let me go and meet these people who I've never really met before. So she goes to the mountains of Colorado to meet her uncle Jake and his two sons, Noah and Caleb. The healing journey that Tiernan goes on in this book, in the beginning of this book, she is in a really dark place, not really because of her parents' death, but more so she's just depressed. Like she has never really felt like she has a family. She's always felt very alone. So now she's with these three dudes up in the, up in the mountains who are technically her family, but like not her family whatsoever. And she kind of doesn't know where to go with her life. And so the journey that Tiernan goes on in this, I personally really love. It does make for a little bit of a slower start in this, but I think once it picks up, it gets, it gets into it. Uh, there is no like blood relation. There's not like, She's never met these people. Like they don't really feel like family. So, you know, if, if it's too much for you, that's cool. Like no one's gonna make you read it. But if you're looking to push it a little bit, like I am, it's great. <laughs> okay, and now her two series. So let's go with the Falling Away series because this was her first ever series. And these ones are like traditionally published. So I will just say you will not be able to find any of these on Kindle Unlimited and you can't find Misconduct on Kindle Unlimited. But Credence, Birthday Girl, and Punk 57, you can all find on Kindle Unlimited, as well as the Devil's Night series. That's also all on Kindle Unlimited, which I'll get to next. But these, nope. So I had to check them out for my library originally, and then I ended up buying them all because, as I said, I'm obsessed. It does consist of four books, and this last book is two novellas together. So let's break these down quick. So we have Bully, the one that started it all. It is her first ever published book. And I think, I don't know about starting with this. I know certain people would recommend starting with the Falling Away series, especially with Bully and going from there. 
um, just because you see her writing grow so much over the course of that. And I do understand that I, at that perspective. However, for me, it was almost like I was so invested in Penelope Douglas at the point that I read this. I read this series last out of everything. And at that point, I kind of like looked over certain things because I was like so invested in her as a writer and so addicted to her writing. So I think it's kind of up to you. If this is where you want to start, I do get that. But if you're more interested in one of the standalones, even though they are her later works, I definitely think you can do that and then revisit this later. This is a high school bully romance. It does fall Jared and Tate. It is a single POV. All the rest of her books are dual POV, which I much prefer. But anyways, in this one, you don't get that. However, you do get Jared's story and until you and you will notice that this has a bookmark in it because i am currently reading it bully comes first and then until you however these are not like a direct retelling because i really hate that and even penelope douglas made a note in this of saying like she wanted to tell jared's point of view but she didn't want to like resell you bully just in a new form she wanted to really add something different and i will just say this is already very different from bully which i so much appreciate i hate when we're getting the same exact scenes but just like the inner dialogue from someone else i'm like could we not have just done this in the first place like i said this is a bully romance they were also childhood childhood friends to enemies to lovers kind of deal they're neighbors and they're like best friends and then one summer jared goes away to his dad's house and he comes back and he just absolutely hates Tate and just starts terrorizing her at school, at home, wherever. And Tate doesn't really know where everything went wrong. So you find that out over the course of these books. And then you have Rival, which is the next book. So this follows a different couple. This follows Fallon and Maddox. And this is also a high school enemies to lovers, but also a step sibling. So like forbiddenness, which I ate up because obviously it's forbidden. I love it. It was really great. You do get to see Maddox in the first one. So then getting his story in this one is cool. There's a lot of secrets that both of them have that come out along the way that really make for interesting dynamics. So love this one. The third book, my personal favorite, that is Falling Away. Yes, this is the UK cover because I can't find the US cover in this one. It's like impossible. So this one follows Jax and Casey. So Jax is Jared's half brother. So they share the same dad, but they have different moms. So Jax, you get some of Jax and until you kind of get to know him a bit and in the previous books, but you really, really get, I mean, obviously it's his story, so we really get into his head. And I just, I just want to love and protect Jax with everything in me. I, I really loved his story and I really loved Casey. I did not like Casey and Bully at all. So Casey all along the way has, kind of seems to always have everything together. But in this one, she's really just kind of down on it. And that's where her and Jax are starting to kind of connect with each other a bit. And mm, Casey and Jax are just, I think, A+. Plus. And then finally, the last book, which is The Next Flame, but this one it consists of two novellas, A Flame and Next to Never. So A Flame, I think actually would be maybe my favorite in the whole series. I know that sounds crazy that it's a novella and normally I don't really like novellas, but this one I just love. It's a continuation of Jared and Tate's story. And then Next to Never is kind of setting up her new series Hellbent a bit with like the next generations of kids. I like Next to Never, it's fine. It's not really anything special. It kind of goes into the parents a little bit, which we needed that backstory, but also like, did I necessarily care in the end? No, but it's in there and definitely I think important for the newer books that are gonna be coming out. Now onto the big boys, some of my faves. We have the Devil's Night series, everyone, in my top 10 series of all times. So this consists of four books, two novellas, and it is a dark romance, like a new adult kind of, because they're all like in their early 20s, so new adult-ish age level. So if you are not into dark romance, just know that these are darker, but I wouldn't say they're like super dark. So if it's kind of, if you want it to be like your introduction a bit, I think this would be a good intro to dark romance. I had never read a dark romance until I read this series. And I do think that it was kind of a good segue into some of the ones now that I've read where I'm like, that's dark. They are companion novels too, so they each follow a different couple. So the first book, Corrupt. So all of these, literally all of these are gonna be enemies to lovers. So I don't feel like I need to preface that for any of these. And also all of these couples have known each other in their like teenage years and now in their twenties. And all books are told in dual POVs and also dual timelines. So they're taking place in the past on one of the devil's nights slash like some other times around that to now present day life. So this one follows Michael and Rika, and Rika is dating Michael's younger brother when we meet, uh, when we start out. And she's just, 
She's never really been into him. She's always been into Michael. And Michael is a part of the Four Horsemen, him and his three friends who we get in the other books. They all every year on Devil's Night just cause general chaos around the town. They kind of just do whatever they want. They're all like rich. They can all get away with it. They have like rich parents. They have like political parents, whatever. So they can kind of get uh, away with all this stuff until one year, three of them end up going to jail. And now in the present day, they are all out and they are ready to get revenge on who they think sent them to prison, which is Rika. Who's definitely, it definitely starts out dark. Um, These characters don't play around, but I eat it up. Rika though, Rika has a backbone. All these women do in these books, which I so much appreciate, all of these heroines put these men in their places and we just live for it. We live for it. And yeah, so this one follows Michael and Rika and it kind of gets the world set up in the story going. Now the second one is a brother's best friend, my favorite, and that's Hideaway. This one follows Kai and Banks. So I'm not really gonna go into too much specifics from here on out because there, there are a lot of big plot points that I don't want to spoil and I don't want to give away. So I will just say, Brother's best friend, Kai, Banks, arranged marriage, hello, um, yes please. I like would tie this one with uh, Kill Switch for my favorite in the series, but I do really love this one and I just think Kai and Banks are perfection. And then we have Kill Switch, this one follows Damon and Winter. If you start reading the series and you're like, I fucking hate Damon, I, I, I was on the same page. I was like, there's no way that she can redeem this man. Now I would do anything in my life to protect Damon. So this one follows Damon and Winter, again, in Enemies to Lovers, and Winter is blind. So that is really cool getting to see the world through her perspective, because I have never read a character before that was blind, like through their POV. So that's really, really cool in the story. And Damon actually marries Winter's sister at the start of this. So that just causes some chaos too. It's just, again, like I said, great. And then there is Conclave, which connects Killswitch and the last book, Nightfall. It is important to read it, I think, out of the two novellas. This one you do really have to read in between. It does a lot of setup for Nightfall, and it also includes Misha and Ryan from Punk 57, which I said they take place in the same world, and Misha and one of the characters in here are cousins. So Misha and Ryan do make a little cameo in here. You don't need to read Punk 57 in order to understand this world at all, and you don't need to read these books to understand the cameo in Punk 57. It's more just like a fun thing in there that if you're reading both that you kind of can pick up on. And then there is the Chunky Boy, Nightfall. Again, just such a stunning cover. It's beautiful. And this one follows Will and Emery. I was so looking forward to Will's story because Will was just like such a sad little e-boy. And I will just say this was a different Will than what I was expecting, but I really loved it nonetheless. This, this and it's the finale, so a fun time. And then Fire Night, which is the novella. So this one takes place a few years, or I don't know, I don't know how many years down the road after Nightfall, but a bit after, but it's just kind of like general fun with the rest of the characters catching up. It's Fire Night, which I think is like around Christmas time. So it's like a holiday thing with them. And it does feature a lot of their children in it, which is cool. So I think if Penelope Douglas ever wanted to revisit this world, she definitely has the potential to do that with the next generation. Um, so yeah, I don't think this one's necessary to the overarching story because Nightfall kind of wrapped everything up, but it is just a fun time. I know I didn't go like super in-depth on the Devil's Night series. I could definitely do a more like in-depth video on that, but I really didn't want to give spoilers out on anything because I do think you kind of need to go in a little more blind in those because there are like a lot of interconnecting relationships and plot points that I just don't want to give anything away to anyone because I think it's fun to read it spoiler free. So, but anyways, now here's my recommended starting order. I would definitely recommend starting with a standalone. Like I said, if you're trying a new author, I think a standalone is always gonna be the way to go. So on that, I would recommend doing either Punk 57 or Birthday Girl. Like I said, I think this one's a great enemies to lovers high school relationship. And this is a great slow burn age gap taboo relationship. So kind of depending on what your feelings are, what your reading tastes are, I think you can't go wrong with starting with either of these. And I think it's just two of her strongest books in general. The only one that I would really recommend not starting with would probably be Credence unless if you are already really exposed to like taboo writing. If you are just coming in here like blind to romance books, I don't think that's the place to start unless if you're like ready to just like dive in because that one is wild. You know, it has some threesomes. As does, as does, uh, as does The Devil's Night. 
just something to know. And then if you want to start with series, like if you're looking to jump in and you want to start with the series, then maybe start with the Falling Away series over the Devil's Night series. It is, it's that high school bully enemies to lovers kind of goodness. But honestly, truly, you can't go wrong with any of her books. I have never rated a book lower than four stars of her. And I think I've read it the, and I think I've rated the majority of her books five stars because genuinely they just, they're just my favorites. There's something about her writing and the way that she creates characters and chemistry between characters that I truly just think is like unmatched. I have thought of doing some more of these like author backlog videos and like kind of guides to authors because I do, when I find an author that I love and click with, I will go through and just read their backlog as much as I can because I'm just like into them. So I'm thinking about doing that with some of the other authors that I've read all of their books for, if that's something that anyone is interested in. And even if it's not, like I said, like I just do this for fun. And if I wanna talk about it, then I'm gonna do it. Thanks for watching. If you made it to this point of the video and you're still here, hi, thank you. I appreciate you. And yeah, I'll see you when I see ya.